uh, now I'm gonna share with you how uh, we're going to to do this webinar. Uh, you can see on on my screen. Uh, well, now the idea is to to introduce the webinar. Then uh, in just five minutes, then we're going to have Andre's presentation. And finally, we're going to have a, a few more minutes for questions that you can make. As you can see, you have a, a button uh, of, you can click on the, on the uh, answer uh, question and answer button. Then, there you can put all, all, all your questions. We usually do all the, we read out loud the questions at the end, at the end of the session, so Andre can uh, answer them. But if we see that there is a specific question that uh, it's worth um, answer, answer it, it now, we will read it out loud for Andre. And if not, we will read them all at the end of the session. There's also another uh, button that where you set chat. That chat is uh, another place where you can write things and uh, all, all of you can, can also answer that uh, chat or comments or whatever. But actually all the uh, questions for Andre, we recommend them to put it in the section where it says questions and answers. And as I said, we will read them out loud, out loud for everybody in, at the end of the session. I would also like to say that this session is being recorded and we will publish uh, all, all this uh, webinar in our website so you can see it again. Or uh, for people who couldn't actually connect can also have it available. And also, um, I, I give you here an email that you can put all your questions. It's training at labnic.net. You can uh, write uh, whatever you want there. And um, well, uh, now I will give the, the, the microphone to Andre so he can start the presentation. And remember any questions you have, uh, just write them in the, in the question and answer section, and we will read them at the end of the session. So, Andre, now uh, I give you the word. Uh, thank you, Janina, and uh, thank you, everyone. Good morning, everyone, for joining this webinar. Um, so, the subject of this webinar is routing security, uh, looking at the problem, and also looking at possible solutions. Um, let me share my screen, because I put a few slides together. Um, Okay, well, let me know if you see see the slide. Okay. Okay, I, I, ho I hope you see that. Okay, so um, it's a common belief that routing security is a, is a problem. I think if you look at a network operators list, uh, there is very often most of the discussion are happening around potential outages or outages that are happening and how to resolve them. But to answer the question is the global routing security is really at risk, it's, it's very tricky. And part of the problem is answering this question is that we often lack data. We tend to talk about routing security in terms of specific incidents providing in-depth analysis and sometimes addressing the impact, but how many of such incidents happen and how does routing security evolve? So that's a very important question. I'll spend uh, part of my presentation looking at some statistics that I put together. We'll look at how routing security um, did in 2017 and also for the first half of 2018. But then we'll look at the uh, sort of problem and solution space. And finally, I would like to present Humanus, which stands for Mutually Agreed Norms for Routing Security, as one of the potential approaches to solving those problems. So when we talk about how routing security evolves and how often such incidents happen, I think the short answer is that there is a lot of going in the routing system. 
So there is not a single day without a dozen of incidents, routing security incidents, and we will talk about uh, this data in more detail later. So I have to tell you upfront, this is not a scientific research. There's some caveats, um, but I think looking at this data, it allows to put a finger on some numbers. And more importantly, by applying the same methodology, we can track the evolution. So if you do the same year after year or month after month, I think we can see, even if specific numbers may, 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 may be lacking some accuracy, but we can see how the routing system evolves in general. So looking at last year, 2017, what we can send that there were about 14,000 total incidents, which were either outages or uh, routing security attacks, such as leaks and hijacks. Over 10% of all networks on the internet were affected. More than 3,000 autonomous systems were a victim of at least one routing incident. And more than 1,500 networks were responsible for more than 5,000 routing incidents in a year. So that's quite a lot. And if you look at this uh, chart on the right, it will show you that in 2017, uh, almost 40% of all incidents were actually routing security incidents. So if we compare those numbers with 2018, and here I put the numbers obviously only for the first half, well, to be precise, for the first five months of 2018, well, what we can see, and those are numbers in blue, right? Compared to 1,500 networks that were responsible now, we see in the first half of the year, 547 networks were responsible for 1,500 routing incidents. And if we look specifically at Latin American region, there were 82 networks responsible for 177 incidents. And again, I'll show you some charts that will detail the statistics, but this is just to give you an overview. And if we assume that uh, while those distribution is even, 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 then I think we are doing better in 2018 than in 2017. So let's talk about the outages. And what is an outage? Well, it's, it's loss of reachability, right? So a particular prefix, particular network disappears from the face of the internet for some time, that's an outage. <clears throat> and if we look at the outages through 2017, we can see that in absolute numbers, Brazil is the leads, and then followed by United States and Iran. But maybe absolute number of outages is not um, sort of, you know, descriptive enough. Maybe we should look at number of networks affected by an outage because there might be networks that struggle a lot, right? And they affect, and their customers are affected, but the rest of the internet is doing fine. Well, again, if you look at the right chart, you will see that Brazil and US are still leading this list, although others are contributing much less. But still, absolute numbers only say part of the story. A better view would be to look at the percentage of networks that operate in a particular country and see what is the percentage of networks affected by an outage in this country. And well, you can see the distribution is slightly different. It's actually the, 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 the leading, so to say, countries here is Brazil, Iran, uh, Argentina, and uh, Nigeria. Now, let's look how the system evolves. That's probably even more interesting question than just looking at absolute numbers. So that's the graph I just showed you. On the, on the, on the left, you can see the chart from 2017. And on the right, I put a chart just to show the changes, change in the percentage of affected by an outage networks. And looking at this dynamics, I'm unsure whether to call it positive or not, but assuming that not all networks are equal and minorities struggle more than others. 
there is a hope that this percentage that you see in light blue will not grow significantly over the rest of the year and will see a positive trend. At least I can say for sure that for the first five months, we see a definite positive trend in routing security, in, 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 in routing uh, resiliency. Well, let's look at the potential victims. You can see the similar list of countries, the US leading the list, they were mostly affected by uh, uh, routing incidents. And if you look at the uh, dynamics again, I think that's, that's a definitely positive dynamic. It, it really shows that uh, the percentage of victimized networks in the country reduced significantly. And in some countries, like in Brazil, for instance, there was a very significant drop from almost 7% to a slightly more than 1% of uh, victimized networks. So again, as I said, if you, if you look at culprits and if you look at absolute numbers, they are not telling the whole story. You need probably to look at the percent of uh, networks operating in the country that are responsible for a routing incident. So if you look at this list, again, the countries that stand out are Brazil, Hong Kong, and Iran. They were the leading countries that caused trouble to themselves and to other regions. Again, I think we observe a positive dynamic here. Uh, significant drop in percentage of uh, uh, networks that either by malice or by misconfiguration uh, cause routing incident. You can see in blue, you see what happened in 2018 and the significantly uh, uh, smaller number than what we saw in 2017. Now, I, I put some statistics for uh, Latin American region. Uh, and on your left, you can see the global distribution. Um, and on your right, you can see a distribution for countries uh, in Latin American region. So um, I think if you look at the percentage, um, the, um, Brazil is not uh, among the, the, the leading countries although there are more uh, incidents happen in Brazil than in all uh, other countries in total. And for other countries, uh, I think the numbers may not be very statistically representative because for some of the countries, there were about a couple of incidents only. I think the two countries, Brazil leads by, by, uh, uh, by an order of magnitude followed by Argentina and then the rest of the countries. But I, show, I, I thought showing you the statistic because you might be interested, of course, in, in, in your particular region. So um, before we go into looking at, okay, we talked about routing incidents, but what is a routing incident? What is the security and how, why it happened? Let's step back and um, basically talk a little bit about how routing works. And, um, I'm sure many of you know this by heart, and I'm probably uh, telling you what you certainly know, but just a recap. So as you may know, there are more than 60,000 networks called autonomous systems on the internet. Those are independent networks that interconnect in different ways, right? They're not falling, uh, forming a full mesh, but they interconnect as a client or as a peer uh, to form sort of connectivity mesh on a global scale. They also exchange what, what we call reachability information among themselves. So if I'm a network, right, and I know what sort of networks are connected to me, I can tell about that to my neighbors. And those neighbors can pass this information along to their neighbors, and therefore this information will spread uh, uh, around the whole internet and each network will build their own roadmap. How will they see the internet? Where to send traffic to a specific destination? So the protocol, which is used to exchange this reachability information, Border Gateway Protocol, BGP, it lacks built-in security. 
So this protocol itself is unable to validate whether your neighbor is telling you truth or not. So it's very easy to lie. I can tell my neighbors that Google is my client and if they want to reach Google, they should forward traffic to me. And if they believe something like what happened in 2008 with Pakistan Telecom, who started announcing a Google prefix and half of the world, even more than half of the world believe them and send traffic to Pakistan Telecom instead of Google and YouTube, well, Google YouTube, were uh, not available to the whole world for about two hours. And Pakistan was not also available because a lot of traffic was sent there uh, and they um, basically, and they couldn't cope with that. But that's what happened. And th that was just one single mistake. So yes, coming back to specific incidents, I think if we look at those sort of spikes and hijacks and uh, uh, route leaks, they cause real world problems. So what are the incidents that we are talking about? Well, the first one is route and prefix hijack. That's one uh, network impersonates another network. I'm telling you, I'm YouTube or I'm Google, please send traffic to me. Well, YouTube hijack, this is a classical example from 2008 when, when that happened. And that's, if it's a malaise, uh, if it's, if it's a, a, mis a misconfiguration, configuration mistake, which I have to admit maybe 90%, if not more, are just configuration mistakes. But because it's so easy to make those mistakes, that worries a lot of people because the system is so fragile, so open to one mistake and that spreads globally that it really requires solution. A more subtle thing is what is called route leak. It's a violation of so-called valley-free routing. And a typical example how it happens if the customer, multi-home customer, starts announcing prefixes from one provider to another provider. And all of a sudden, this customer becomes a transit provider itself. So again, if it's misconfiguration, most probably it will be a self-inflicted denial of service attack because a lot of traffic will start flowing through this customer and the customer will not be able to cope with that. But there may be more subtle ways. It may be a malicious attack that allows any network to inject themselves in the path between point A and point B. And that's an excellent, that's a prerequisite if you want to mount a man in the middle attack, if you want to uh, establish surveillance, or you want to um, do some reconnaissance activities in a very passive, stealth way, that's a perfect tool for you. And another thing which is not routing per se, but the routing system actually enables that, is what is called source IP address spoofing. And that is impersonating someone else in a packet, in IP packet, than who you are. And I, I have a few pictures. I, I'll, I'll, I'll show you those pictures, so maybe that would be uh, more, uh, more clear what I mean here. So very quickly, let's go through this uh, sort of types of routing incidents. That's what I, I told route hijack. And you see here, this is the normal path. So if, if uh, uh, this network A announces its prefix to the internet and then the customer through their provider gets this prefix, the traffic flows in a normal way. But if an attacker, this uh, network X, all of a sudden starts announcing the same prefix or even more uh, effective and more specific prefix of that network and the uh, provider B uh, believes them, that's how the traffic will start flowing. And that will cause significant distortion of traffic. Well, depending of course on the prefix, depending of course on the propagation scope of that prefix in the internet. Route leak, that's what I told you, a more subtle way of mounting an attack. And here, this uh, network with IS number 64501 leaking uh, prefix. And well, in this example, I put the prefix of the Google public DNS, a very important service. Many, many networks and many customers are using this service. So um, this network all of a sudden starts
I, I apologize. Uh, do you guys still hear me? Something happened with my PowerPoint. So I have to, I have to restart. Hi, Andre. Yeah, uh, we can hear you, but we cannot see your presentation. Please. Yes, share I will. I will start sharing again because my oh, okay. PowerPoint PowerPoint crashed. So that's what happened. I apologize for that. I hope you can see the slide now. Can, can you see this? Yes, Janine? perfect. Okay. Yes. All right. So, so in this particular case, this network with the number six, four, five, or zero passes the traffic for Google pu public DNS from the customers of this managed participant network. So imagine what kind of, I mean, if it's misconfiguration, that's one thing. It just increases latency and degrades the service. But if it's a malicious attack, then this network will be able to see all the traffic from the clients of that network that go to public DNS. And DNS, I show you, can, 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 can tell a lot of things what's happening in the net. So a specific example, in 2014, there were three networks involved in a similar type of incident, and it caused disruptions of traffic in places very far from where it was happening. It was happening in the United States, but it was seen in Pakistan and Bulgaria. So it, it, if, if it's not a really malice, which is dangerous in its own way, if it's, it's a misconfiguration, those misconfigurations really have global scope. So where the culprit is located in one country, the pain will be felt in many, many other regions. So that's, that's a real problem. And finally, when we talk about spoofing, that's a root cause for so-called reflection amplification attacks. So one, one common sort of classical example, when you use DNS, open resolvers, and you send DNS queries to those resolvers, spoofing source IP address with the address of the victim. So those resolvers, they will respond to the source IP address, which will be the victim, and they will not only respond to the same poor victim, but they also will amplify the response, because in DNS and some other services, the answer may be short, or the, the question may be short, but the answer is big. So you send a lot of short answers, and all, a lot of short questions, and all big answers go to this particular victim, which can cause an attack of volume, like, well, this year we observed an attack of volume 1.3 terabits per second. So that attack can, that's a really infrastructural attack that can smash a lot of networks on its way. Okay, so that's a real problem. I hope you agree with me that routing security is really a problem. It needs attention and it needs improvement. So the, the, the interesting thing is that those problems are known for quite a long time. Already back in 2006, it was documented in the IETF document. And before that, I mean, those problems were also known. So what is happening? Why can't we solve that? Do we have tools? And looking at this, yes, we have tools. We have best current practices. We actually know how to sort of what to apply and how to solve those problems. Um, but if you look at the deployment, it's really, really low. If you look how those incidents propagate through the internet, you will see that there is not many barriers on their way, which means not many networks implement those practices. Well, one reason for that is that to implement full suite of solutions, it requires a lot of knowledge and quite heavy lifting. And the second is because BGP itself cannot validate, as we discussed internally, it requires an out-of-band data. Are the databases where you can check if information that you receive through BGP is correct? And those databases, such as Whois database or 
internet routing registries or RPKI, they are not complete and some of them are not well maintained. So you're lacking data. Even if you have the tools, you don't have the data to make right decisions. And if you look at the security, right? If you look at the security in corporate sense, it's always about frameworks and approaches because security is not a state. Security is a process. You can't say I'm secure because the next moment you may not if you don't have good processes in place that will look after your security. So security is always a systemic approach which is well understood in the corporate world. So if you look at your internal network security, I'm sure many of you know this and have frameworks and have security officer and look after that. But how can we solve security of a globally distributed system of 60,000 networks, independent networks? That's a real challenge. Another thing is that we also, we all together in this game, think about this. From a routing perspective, security of your own network is to a great extent in the hands of other network operators. So you may deploy those tools, you can deploy those controls, but they will contribute more or less to the overall security of the internet and less to your own security. Back to this incident with YouTube. YouTube couldn't really protect themselves from this hijack. It's the Pakistan telecom service provider, PCCW, who could have checked if Pakistan telecom announces the right prefix. So security of YouTube at that point was in the hands of Pakistan telecom and PCCW and some other networks that accepted this wrong announcement. So you see, there's an interesting pro problem that uh, you rely on parties with whom you have no relationship. You have no peering relationship. You have no contractual relationship. Still, they're crucial in implementing security of your own network. So that's a real problem, isn't it? And one of the approaches which was suggested by a group of operators a few years ago that Internet Society supports, but it's really an industry-driven approach, is MANUS, which stands for Mutually Norms, Grid Norms for Routing Security. It actually approach that promises that we can establish the systemic approach and step-by-step step we can start solving routing security issue. So let me explain this in more detail. So why we think that will work and why we think it's different from all these best practices and tools that existed for decades and still didn't see massive deployment. Because MANUS addresses the two facets of the problem I mentioned. First thing, it defines the baseline. It defines an absolute minimum that all operators must implement. We understand that full suite of routing security solutions may be too heavy, but there are little things that you can do, and there is very little excuse not for doing this. And this is about cleaning your side of the street, which, is, which, which forms this minimum baseline, a norm, right? And this baseline is defined in four actions. I will talk about them a bit later. And the second thing, we also create, or we, I mean, Manus creates a community. Actually, network operators that join Manus, they are not just saying, I think routing security is very important. They actually implement this baseline. They lead by example, and many of them implement much more, but they demonstrate, they publicly demonstrate their commitment to routing security by implementing those four actions. And that's a difference between just best current practice, a document that advises you how to do things and the community that does things and leads by example. So these are four actions. Filtering, anti-spoofing, coordination, global validation. These are all about 
cleaning up your part of the street, doing something that is under your control. You can, you know who your customers are. You should know what kind of networks they are running, what kind of announcements you should expect from them. So filtering here at this age, filtering of your customer code is an absolute must. The same applies to anti spoofing. Since you know what networks are behind you, then you can see if packets sent from those networks are coming from wrong source IP addresses. Coordination. It's about making your contact information globally available. So in, in case of uh, you know, operational coordination, resolving an incident, mitigating an incident, you are reachable. That's a small thing seemingly, but uh, those of you who are operating networks, I hope you agree with me, it's, it's really crucial to reach another, to be able to reach another network in, in, in times of, of, of an incident. And finally, global validation doesn't require a network to validate globally. It actually requires the network to populate those databases that I mentioned, uh, routing registries, RPKI, with their own routing data and maintain this data. So the more networks populate and maintain this data in those databases, the easier it is to validate globally. That's the logic. So you see, it may sound like motherhood and apple pie, but those actions are really very narrow in scope, right? Um, they really tailored to low cost and low risk of implementation. Now, Manus is not a firewall. It's not an immediate solution to the routing problem. It's not like if you implement Manus actions, you become routing secure, right? You contribute to routing security, but you can still be a victim uh, of a routing incident, right? That is because the nature of this problem. That is because the problem spans continents and the culprit can be on another side of the, of the, of the networks, of the internet. But it's an important step. It's a stepping stone, right? And the more we build this community, the more those baseline, this baseline becomes a norm, uh, the more secure and resilient the routing system is. So one of the things that uh, people sometimes asking, I'm asking myself, is it all based on pure altruism, right? If, if security is in, in, in some other's uh, hands, what's the motivation for them to do something for me while we may be a competitor? So um, are there other forces to routing security, such as market forces that we can leverage? And whether Manus as an effort has a potential to you know, raise those market forces. So for this last year, we commissioned a study from a company called 451 Research to look at the perceptions between enterprises and their service providers when it comes to routing security. So there were interesting findings. So what we learned from the study is that security is vital to enterprises. And while Manus low knowledge is low, they were not aware, uh, the respondents were not aware of Manus, but they were willing to require Manus as a compliance from their service providers. And on another side, what came out of the study, and the study is available online, if you go to the Manus website, you can find it, that security can help providers to differentiate themselves from their competitors in this connectivity market. And connectivity market is very flat. It's very price driven. So it's very hard to differentiate themselves. But if you have Manus as a signal, that's a, that can be a very powerful tool. So there was one question about security concerns of enterprise when it comes to connectivity services. And you can see that their security concerns are very much aligned with the problem uh, a statement or problem that Manus is trying to address. So once explained, enterprise understood quite well that their objectives when it comes to connectivity are very much aligned with Manus. So they were very much looking at Manus as something that can help them solve those problems in the long term. 
So to summarize that, I mean, from taking the results of the study into account, and there are many more, there are many more uh, uh, results and graphs if you go to the study, and I, I, I can share with you the, the URLs uh, uh, separately. But apart from just, you know, uh, improving routing security uh, by implementing those actions, cleaning your part of the street, Manus gives network operators an opportunity to signal their organization security forward posture. And that's very important because in security, signaling is one of the challenges. How do you know that your provider is secure? So manners can help. Let me talk a little bit about manners. Uh, uh, one very important aspect of this is increasing adoption. Because you probably see that the value, the potential of manners grows uh, as the membership grows, right? The more networks start adopting manners, the more valuable it becomes for others. It's sort of, you know, network effect that we see in other places of the internet as well. Oh, sorry. So in looking at manners adoption, we have several strategies and one of them to look for partners. So if I'm just going around and making this presentation. Maybe it will have effect, I hope it will, but it doesn't scale, it doesn't really scale. What we need that after this presentation, the networks that join Manus, they do the same. They evangelize, they ask their customers to join Manus, they ask their peers to join Manus. And IXPs in this respect are very good partner because they peer with many networks while they actually provide this peering service. So we looked at this and we started working with the IXP community, looking how they can become also Manus members and therefore can promote this within their membership, their community. And that's a very important local community with common operation objective. It's a very important target for Manus. So in the spirit of um, Manus, because Manus is not just a declaration of uh, goodwill, right? It's really a public demonstration of concrete commitment and real steps to impro for improvement. A group of uh, uh, IXPs went off two years ago, went off and developed their own set of actions that are applicable for internet exchange points that can improve routing security and at the same time a tangible way to demonstrate commitment of an internet exchange point to routing security. So we launched this program uh, this year in April at EURX meeting. And you can see well, it's already more than uh, 20, about 20 IXPs, big names and not so big names have joined this program. You can see there are five actions, not four, five actions that are slightly different, but they are very powerful at the same time. Take for instance, one of the actions, which is filtering at the route server. Basically, IXP participating in Manus program creates a very clean peering environment for its members. It actually resolves a lot of routing incidents which propagate through peering relationship. So we hope that will really have a significant impact in routing security. Another thing is that when you look at initiatives like this, one of the thing is, of course, create motivation, right? Incentivize, uh, let people mo get motivated to join this. But another sort of uh, side of this coin is to lower the cost of adoption. And how to lower the cost is to provide guidance, make it very easy to implement those actions. So the community went off and created this implementation guide. And I have to be honest with you, first, uh, when we started developing this guide, we thought, okay, it should be a very good simple document with like, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven instructions that anyone can just go on, sort of a checklist, implement, be done. Now this document is now a 50 page long document and some of the things do not look like a, a, a list of instructions. So rousing security is still hard but we hope that this implementation guide can help and guide people in implementing those actions. 
It actually was recently recognized by a RIPE community. It was assigned a RIPE document number, so you can look now not only on the MANUS website, but also in the RIPE repository under this number. When further, because, well, one thing is just document, another thing is getting, you know, real experience, and we created training tutorials. Right now, there's six online tutorials available for people to do this training at their own pace. We also uh, now in the training of moderate. So we want to create a, a opportunity to build moderated classes when a group of people can join with a moderator and go through this, this course. But basically those six modules, they cover manners in general and then how to implement uh, manners actions in, in great detail. And we have another project that we plan to finish in, 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 in about in several months which is a hands-on lab, hands lab. That's where people will be given an opportunity to configure their network to become a manners compliant. So once they complete this lab, they go back to their um, uh, job, to their network, they can immediately implement manners actions in their network, become manners compliant, and hopefully join the setup. So that's, that's our vision. Um, another interesting development I wanted to share with you, this is work in progress, so I, I'll just mention this in passing, is uh, member report in Manus Observatory. So let me start with Manus Observatory. One of the things is that what I just said, we need the statistics, we need to support the problem with facts, and we also need to look where the problems are. Which region is not getting uh, uh, well with routing security? Who, who has more incidents than others? And and also very importantly, to look how the system evolves, whether efforts like MANAS have any impact on routing security. So for this, we are working now on MANAS Observatory that will collect a lot of data from different data sources about routing, routing security, routing incidents, and will allow you to look at this data in different dimensions over time. For instance, on this mock-up window, you can see how filtering is evolving in different regions. So here we compare Latin American region and the European region. Uh, well, this is a mock-up. So. Um, and another thing is that what we're working on is Manus report. And the motivation for this is to bring to members' attention their level of commitment, what we call Manus readiness. When a network joins MANUS, we do the checks. We actually uh, carefully consider the application, we ask questions, and we ask a network to run certain tests. So when network joins MANUS, we are pretty confident that they are compliant, that they implemented those actions. But as you know, as time goes by, as new networks are connected to this network, as, as you get new customers, some things may not get up to scratch. So we want to monitor that and want to ensure that once you joined, you will remain compliant. Or if there is a case of some incompliance, that you will be informed. For this, we are creating those member reports. And this is crucial for the credibility of this effort. Because sometimes I hear that Manus is just a website and anyone can put their um, you know, name of the network of this website. No one checks anything. And you know, great polluters are on this list. This is not true. Well, checks are now not yet performed on a regular basis. We'll start this uh, later this year and uh, members will be alerted. And the effort will, in, in an effort to make this initiative more transparent, which is crucial for credibility of this effort. So let me recap, I'm, I'm approaching the end of my presentation. Uh, so if you're a network operator or if you're an IXP and you're thinking, why, why should I join this initiative? There are three main things that we distill. First, you, you improve your own security posture and you reduce your number impact of routing incidents. If you have security controls in place, then things become less noisy. Then you can see incidents more clear and your troubleshooting is better. Even if it doesn't immediately protect you from all the external uh, uh, attacks. 
you will join a community of security minded operators working together to make the internet better. And that is not just a, you know, a goodwill. This community shares a lot of security related information. So you will become part of this club. And as we grow and as manners becomes a really recognized mark of technical excellence, you can use this as a competitive differentiator. Think about it. So joining is simple. If you implement those actions, and uh, I, I would really invite you to go to the Menace website and uh, look uh, at the actions and their description. Um, you fill out the sign up form and we'll start the dialogue. We'll ask you some questions. Please provide as much information as possible when you sign up. This information is used purely internally to evaluate your application, never published. And uh, we may ask questions and run tests and get involved with the community. So this ends my presentation. Uh, there is a URL to the video. I don't know if you uh, guys are game to watch the video. It's a two and a half minutes video that explains manners in a nutshell, maybe even better than I did in this presentation. Uh, so I don't know, uh, Janina, uh, what do you think? Can we run this or we better look at the questions and then people can run this video on their own? Uh, hi, Andre. Well, thank you for the presentation. It was really interesting. Uh, well, first, um, maybe we can read. There's one question now and we will share the question and then we can see the video. Uh, the question is, uh, Mars has received recognition from Bright. What is the degree of acceptance of dissemination by other regions? It's a very good question. Um, uh, well, I, I, I do not know the numbers uh, from the top of my head uh, by region. In total, we now have more than 70 members. Uh, if we talk about ISPs, network operators, covering more than 180 networks all around the globe. The leading regions in MANUS adoption are uh, Western Europe and uh, North America. I have to say in Latin okay. America, there are a couple of members that are members of MANUS initiative and would like to see more adoption in, in, in your guys' region. Yes. Great, thank you. Uh, there is another question in the chat which says, how can I use a uh, man? Sorry, could, could you repeat, repeat the, the, the question again? Yes, it's how can I use a, a M A N R S, the man? How can I use manners? Um, I guess it's partly, uh, well, once you join manners, right? Um, you can use this in multiple ways, right? First of all, you become a member of Manus and that is publicly seen. So if you go to the Manus website and look at the uh, list of participants, you will be listed there, right? You can also provide the testimonial that we publish on our website. You can share your blog posts, which are related to routing security on our Manus website. You can raise questions and have participate in the discussions of Manus community through Manus web mailing list. You can become, well, you probably should become ambassador of Manus and uh, we Internet Society will support you if you want to go to a particular meeting, uh, make a presentation. So we have uh, slide decks, we have some uh, promotion material that you can use um, uh, to promote Manus further. So that's how you can use manners but um, i'm sure as more people join there are more creative ways manners can be used and promoted further great thank you andre uh, well uh, now you can maybe share the video is it too long it's two and a half minutes do we have this time right. of course yes you can share it now okay well, let me let me share let me see if if Okay. Please, when you share the video, you have to click uh, on your screen, share audio too, so we can hear it too. Yes, let me share the video. Okay.
Can you see this? Yes, we can. Can you see YouTube? Yes, yes. The internet is a big, busy place. Networks across the globe are constantly exchanging routing information to get traffic where it needs to be. But this routing infrastructure is hit with hundreds of incidents every day, making global communication difficult, uncertain, and unsecure. Incidents such as route hijacking, when one network operator or attacker impersonates another. Route leaks, when a network operator unintentionally announces that it is a route to a destination. And IP address spoofing, when fake source addresses hide a sender's identity or impersonate someone else. These issues affect us all because they can inflict a lot of damage, like denial of service attacks, surveillance, and lost revenue, which impacts the safe, secure, and smooth running of the internet. If you run a network, you have a responsibility to fix the routing infrastructure. We can do something to tackle these issues and secure the internet's core routing system together. Join us in implementing MANNERS, or Mutually Agreed Norms for Routing Security. MANNERS provides four simple but solid actions that provide crucial fixes to reduce the most common routing threats. These are filtering, making sure your and your customers' routing announcements are correct, stops false routing announcements from distorting the internet roadmap. Anti-spoofing, enabling source address validation prevents spoofed packets from entering or leaving your network. Coordination, maintaining globally accessible contact information in common places such as the PeeringDB, RIR Who Is databases, and your own website. And global validation. Publishing your data, including your routing policy and prefixes you intend to advertise, so your routing information can be validated by third parties. Your security depends on others, and your actions affect everyone else. Implement these four simple actions and join the Manners community. A collection of security-minded and motivated organizations committed to making the global routing infrastructure more robust and secure for everyone. To learn more, visit manners.org. Only by working together can we solve these problems. Together, we can protect the core. Hi, so I hope you enjoy the video. Hi. Can you still hear me? Yes, yes, perfect. Thank you, Andre. Thank you for the uh, great video. I hope video. you enjoyed that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it was uh, very clear. So, well, thank you for the... I'm going to share my screen now. Uh, there you can see it. Okay. Well, uh, first of all, we would like to thank you, Andre, for all well, this a great presentation and as I said before it was very useful and uh, also we would like to remind, remind you that uh, we're going to publish uh, this webinar which was recorded in this web this website you can also uh, find it on our web website under LACNIC and training uh, also if you couldn't uh, write uh, the question here you can send it to training at lagnic.net. Uh, we will uh, resend them any other question to Andre so uh, he can answer. Uh, um, well, that will, that will be everything. Thank you everybody for participating of this webinar and hope to see you soon in our next webinar. Thank you very much to everybody and thank you, Andre. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.